Hello and welcome to Unit 1.4. We're going to talk about continuity. Again, this is kind of an extension piece from 1.3, the piecewise functions. Here, um, we, we really discussed a little bit about limits and continuity there, but here we're actually going to see the formal definition, how to write it, and what is acceptable in the AP format. So you do need to be able to analyze functions for intervals use, uh, for continuity or points of discontinuity. And the main thing is, can you tie it back to that formal definition using correct notation? So first things first, what is continuity? The simplest method that we can explain it is that a function is continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pencil. And I don't mean that, oh, I can find some way to draw a discontinu discontinuous uh, function without picking up my pencil, you are, you know, art people, you could easily draw something um, without ever picking up that pencil. However, we're talking about in general form, like if I get to a hole, that's technically picking up my pencil. So let's look at a couple of examples. Would you say that this function is continuous or discontinuous? Well, as I'm drawing, I'm going along, doo -doo 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 -doo, and here's my first point. I have to pick up that pencil in order to continue drawing. And again, I have to pick up that pencil in order to continue drawing, Continue. And right here, I would have to pick up that pencil. So this is a non-continuous or discontinuous function. My apologies. This function right here, from negative 1 to 0, continuous? Absolutely. But from negative 1 to positive 2, discontinuous. I had to pick up my pencil at 0. I had to pick up my pencil at 1. And of course, to draw that coordinate point, I had to pick up my pencil. So what is my formal definition of continuity? Well, there are three conditions that we have to kind of get to in order to realize continuity. First of all, does the limit exist? That has hidden uh, disclaimers in itself, doesn't it? In order for a limit to exist, I have to look at the limit from the left and I have to look at the limit from the right. So really to test continuity, I start with my limit from the left and I start with my limit from the right to figure out whether or not my limit at that point exists. Next, I have to know at that point, and in this instance, C is our X value point. So at that point, is the function defined? Do I have an undefined moment? Is there a big old hole right there? Mm, then it's not continuous. Finally, we look at our true formal definition of continuity. The limit as X approaches some value. So let's say we're talking about two. The limit as X approaches two, of f of x, look here, look at notation, it does not say f of 2, be careful with that, of f of x, is equal to the function value at that c value. In our example, I said 2, so at 2. So if the limit exists, if my function value exists, and those are the exact same number, then continuity exists. And again, this is the part I need you to be paying attention to. That is our literal formal definition of continuity. When you write disclaimer statements, when you say the function is continuous because, this is your because statement. If you write that notation correctly, that's your statement right there. You're good to go. A couple of different types of continuity that we have. Um, every now and then you get a question like identify the type of discontinuity. So which kind is it? We have a removable discontinuity. And that's literally like if I could fill it back in, if I could, I remove that discontinuity. So those are those little holes in our graph. If I plugged it back in, that's a removable uh, discontinuity. We also have something that we call non-removable. And those are these two uh, discontinuities below. We have a jump discontinuity. I can't just remove it by plugging in a point. Okay, I'm literally jumping from one set section to another. And we have what's called an infinite discontinuity, but we call that a vertical asymptote. So as I approach a vertical line, I'm going to either go to a positive or a negative infinity, hence an infinite discontinuity. Just a quick note, just to remind you about which functions are going to almost always be continuous unless something really weird is happening. Polynomials, they're always continuous. Rational functions, they are continuous in their domain. Obviously, certain rational functions don't have a negative domain, so they're not going to exist there. But where they exist, they are continuous. Power functions, these are part of our polynomials. Um, but power functions are continuous. Exponentials are continuous, again, where their domain exists. Logarithmic, again, where where its domain exists, it is continuous, and certain trigonometric functions are continuous at all points. Please be really careful with our trig values because sine and cosine, continuous, but, tri but tangent, not so much. We've got some discontinuity. So tan is continuous between its vertical asymptotes. So again, trig is, trig is weird. Trig is a funky one. So here's my first example. For these examples, what I want you to do is identify at that X point, you're going to identify whether it's continuous. And if it's not continuous, what kind of discontinuity? So here's that first one. We're looking at X equals 2 and X equals 3. Take a moment, pause, and figure out what do you think those answers are going to be. 
Okay, so if you if you pause, if you're joining us back at x equals two, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. At x equals two, what's happening? Is this continuous? Well, as I come along, I had to lift my pencil to create that hole, so that means it is not continuous. But what kind of discontinuity is that? Could I plug that in? I'm going to ignore this coordinate point. Could I plug in this point? and would remove the discontinuity? Absolutely, therefore it's a removable discontinuity. Sometimes kids get uh, confused right here. They see that coordinate point and they're like, aren't I jumping to that coordinate point? No, you have a coordinate point up there, but you are not jumping to another part of the graph. This does not continue, so it is not a jump discontinuity. What about at x equals three? If I look along, I can draw my pencil, it is continuous. I've got another example. Again, pause, take a second to look at x equals zero and at x equals one. Okay, our answers at x equals zero, I have a removable discontinuity. And at x equals one, this is a true jump discontinuity. So we identified a couple of our discontinuities. Moving on, what happens if I don't have a graph? What happens when I have to do what's called our algebraic solves? So again, I just take it step by step. And this looks like our piecewise function, doesn't it? So I look at the limit. And in this step, I know I've got two hidden steps. I need to know the limit from the left and the limit from the right. Then I look at the function value itself. If I have a piecewise function, I just follow the piecewise function. Then I declare whether it's continuous or not. So let's start with this first part right here. I get a pen. Okay. So looking at that, I need to know the limit from the left. Uh-oh, my pen went out. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I need to know the limit from the left and the limit from the right. So... Let's look at the limit as x approaches 4 from the left. So I come over here and I look and I see there's nothing really left below or above. We're actually talking about I've got a linear line and I've just got a hole at 4. That's what that piecewise tells me. So from the left, that's still this function that becomes, I can't forget my f of x. I'm always forgetting that. 3 times 4 plus 2, which is 12 plus 2, which is 14. The limit from the right of f of x would be, again, same function, because all we're doing is discluding 4. It's not telling me below or above. So 3 times 4 plus 2 should be the same answer. So the limit from the left and the limit from the right both equal 14. Therefore, what does my limit equal? It also equals 14 because the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. Now what's my function value at four? I come back to my graph and I look, okay, at four, it cannot be this function, but at four, it is this function right here, which is simply a coordinate point at four comma two, so therefore, at f equals four, my answer equals two. So let's go through my formal definition of continuity. The formal definition of continuity tells me as x approaches some c value, then that function at c has to be equal. So let's fill, plug in our c value. Our c value is 4. So as x approaches 4 of f of x, ooh, f of x of the function value of 4. Well, does 14 equal 2? No, it does not. So is my graph continuous? No, it is not continuous because, and I could write all of this, that, oh, no, not that. I don't want to write that. My bad. Let's write our actual statement. The graph f of x is not continuous because, and then I would write my declarative statement, which is that formal definition. The limit as x approaches 4 of f of x does not equal function value of 4. This is what I mean by if you know this statement, you're done, you're good to go. That is my declaration statement. I could have gotten full credit for that problem. So let's look at another one. Oh, oh, look at that. I put in some answers for myself. I didn't even realize it. So there's that graph if you want to see what I'm talking about. So as I come along, I hit my limit exists, my function value exists, but they don't equal each other, so it is discontinuous. There's that wrap up. I wrote all this in and didn't realize it. So let's compare with our info. Boom, we did it. Cool. So there you go. There's that wrap up. There's that information. Again, you know, writing that, here it is, writing that, that literacy statement is important, not just because, you know, in education, we're thinking about literacy, but before the AP exam specifically, your free response answers have to be clear, concise, appropriate, include math language, include math notation, etc.